well. Thank you very much. So the question is, what is the next X factor? Is it an iPhone 1, an iPhone 2, an iPhone 3 with super mega telepathic powers? What will it be? Well, whatever it is, it has to be something that has real um, face power, not virtual face, uh, Facebook power. Um, we've become obsessed with uh, gadgets and iPhones that, in a sense, we're losing a part of our humanity. <clears throat> and it's almost as if, like the ship SS United States, which is in permanent dry dock in South Philadelphia, waiting for an overhaul or a buyer, we are waiting for whatever technology um, offers us down the road. And that could include as something as weird as exography or a kind of a 3D uh, neo-humanity in which we, we almost um, want to engineer ourselves out of existence. You can see this in the way we walk around town. We, we uh, gear ourselves up with these armadillo tech contraptions on our heads. We don't say hello to friends on the street. We may miss a wave from a friend or a potential friend in a bus or in a train because we're so thoroughly into ourselves and, and our own world. We, um, we take laptops and iPhones to bed and place them on our chest. We even iPhone and text collectively as a family. I was once traveling by bus on I-95 and I saw a family in a car texting and iPhoning collectively. Um, I call them the 2013 version of the Brady Bunch, but nobody was paying attention to the road. Uh, this kind of thing is very unnerving and it kind of it tells me again, what are we becoming and where is technology taking us? Chief Teddy Young Singh was chief of the Delawares. He was a friend of William Penn's. And here he is in his obscure pedestal in Fairmount Park, almost, you know, peering into the future. And I like this statue because it kind of, it kind of calls to mind just what is the chief looking at? What does he see? Does he see a future saturated in um, electronic obsession? And does he see a future that um, electronic obsession with a dopamine rush? I have a story about some neighbors in Fishtown. I live in a Fishtown neighborhood as it goes into Port Richmond. I've been there for about 11 years. And the population is mostly uh, blue collar, working class, great people. Um, about two years ago, two of the people across the street sold their house. And some parents bought the house for um, one of their kids. They were from the suburbs. The kids moved in. Now these were kids, I can't call them kids, they're maybe late 20s. They um, came into the neighborhood, um, thinking that they still lived in the suburbs, you know, living in uh, detached houses with their own lawn. They had no idea of city life. When they moved into the house, th they didn't talk to any of the neighbors, which was a problem. Somebody tried to actually shake their hand, and they gave a cursory handshake, and it was like, it was almost as if the feeling was, well, you're not our type, you're not where we're from, we don't want to get too close to you. So it was obvious that they were maintaining their distance. Well, this went on for a few months. Um, the neighbors talked about them. Well, they don't want to talk to us. So be it. Then came the 4th of July. They had a big party. Beer, kegs, rock music, everything. They had guests coming out of the wazoo. All of these cars, they parked on the sidewalks in front of all of the houses along the sidewalk which if you come from an old Philadelphia neighborhood, you realize you do not do. Big cultural taboo. You don't park your car on somebody's sidewalk in front of somebody else's house. These poor guys and women had no clue because they didn't bother to talk to the neighbors. 
They never took the time to find out just what the neighborhood was about. As a result, uh, the party went on till three and four in the morning. Um, one of the neighbors blew up, called the police, and every car was given a big fat ticket. The next day, I could see them come out there, take the ticket, they were shocked. Why are they doing this to us? Everybody in this neighborhood parks on the sidewalk. Well, guess what, they don't. If you had taken the time to talk to people, to get out of your own world, you would have discovered that the only people who park on the sidewalk are the people with houses and a sidewalk in front of their house. So um, I was talking with neighbors afterwards and uh, we said, well, how can we make a connection with these people? Should we, should we don plastic shields and wires and a string of light and walk down the street vibrating, hoping to make a connection with them? I think that's a little extreme, but I think you get what I mean. Here is a guy, and I'm trying to get the third slide. I'm sorry, here we go. His name is Todd, he's a friend of mine. Now, Todd is really looking for a human connection. Todd uh, does not want to live in isolation. To Todd, an iPhone means nothing. Born without arms, he uses his feet to both eat and type. Um, he has to have attendance because of his condition. Todd's version of the X Factor would be artificial arms placed over the stubs on his shoulders. But unfortunately, technology doesn't have the wherewithal for that. So Todd's big X Factor is not, is a simple a thing as not engineering himself out of existence. So unlike the people in his center city apartment building who don't talk in elevators, they're all glued to their iPhones. They make no human connection. Todd is dying for a human connection. They want to engineer themselves out of human existence. He wants in, so there's kind of a stalemate. And I think to Todd, the X factor is the way to be human is to really uh, connect with one another and to pay attention to one another. Thank you.